I know. Let's take the girl from Matilda and make her a vampire. That'll never work. Except it does, brilliantly. Abigail is here. This ain't your grandpa's vampire movie. It's a next level genre bending bloody brilliant feature. We'll catch up with the whole cast. And while blood's flowing, we might as well talk Chucky, the world's favorite serial killing doll now on its wildly successful season three on sci-fi. And then a dose of reality. After that, we'll talk with X-Files Jillian Anderson and the cast of Scoop to get the scoop as we take a look. Hold the door, hold the door. Oh, hey, you're early. Or am I late? It doesn't matter. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being a part. What were we watching right before this? It doesn't matter. This is all about what you should watch next. That's why the show is called Take a Look. Take a look at streaming series. Take a look at movies, sports, anything that's cool on a screen this side, this size, or in the theaters. That's what we're talking about. I've rambled. Thanks for hanging out. Hang out with this person. This is Kelly Savannah Deaton. How are you? Hi, great. Have I you... don't mind your rambling, by the way. Ramble well, away. In my rambling, I left stuff out. If you're watching on YouTube, look how cool you are. Thanks for doing that. Be sure and like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe. And if you're just watching, just like. Just look at the TV right now and go, I like that. And thanks like for being that. a part. Sounds good. I like that. You know what I like? <laughs> what do you like? I've been waiting for like the whole year to tell you about this. What? Abigail has oh, arrived. Oh, I know. I'm so excited. How much power does that little girl punch? She, I wouldn't even call her a little girl. She's Just a bloodthirsty vampire. Yeah, exactly. She was the little girl in Matilda who yes. crushed it in that. That's Alicia. Uh, Melissa, you might recognize if you go, hey, she looks like the girl from Scream. She oh. was in the most recent mm -hmm. Scream movies. I sat down with them to talk about this crushing performance in blood. Take a look. Good to see you too. Good to Me see you too. too. My gosh, so drastically different than the last time I saw you, which was in this film. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, she's kind of wearing pink at the beginning. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, which is equally terrifying. With no offense, this movie is so effective, so bloody bananas. Are you afraid people are going to be afraid of you for the rest of your life? I hope not, but in a way, I hope they are scared <laughs> when they watch the film, but I hope they're not too scared in real life. <laughs> I saw people leaving the theater, they were so scared. And someone would drag what? them back in and go, no, you're gonna sit through this movie, it's that effective. <laughs> What's the day you're going to remember for the rest of your lives where you were just in your most joyful, creative space making this movie? It, it would have to be the the um, blood cannon. Yeah. I think it was, it was just such a highlight and I don't think I was, I mean, I've never been in a movie with blood ever. So from going from never to like blood everywhere was really strange. And the blood cannon as well, I was not expecting it. I didn't know what to expect. And we only had one take to do it because we didn't want to mess up because the blood goes everywhere. So I was so scared I was going to do something wrong. But um, it was... I was shocked. I couldn't speak afterwards. I I just had no idea what just happened. She was actually shocked. Like, she, she was a little bit like... We got up afterwards, and my face was completely covered. Like, I couldn't even open my eyes. It got in my mouth everywhere. And she had, like, a perfectly beautiful, like, half face of blood. But she was just like this, like... And we were like, Alicia, are you okay? She was like... But it was, it was like a big explosion, that final one. So it was fun. That's, mm -hmm. that's something we'll remember. For no matter time. how much you clean up, do you find yourself, like, after you wrap for the day, you're at a restaurant later on or someone's house, and they go, hey, you've got... Like oh yeah, yeah, like behind your ear yeah. or like on an elbow. <laughs> yeah, you Sweater. find you find blood days afterwards uh, <laughs> in places that you didn't you missed and under your fingernails. It's really hard to get it out. I can only imagine that we're finding blood for uh, a long, long time. And under your fingernails. Oh, story for another time. Yeah, I'm told <laughs> over forty thousand gallons of blood. They ran out of blood. Had to ship blood across the pond in order to get this. Uh, and who, I, you, I forgot that she was Irish. Like, you, she is so American in this movie. I know, I know. Do an impression. Oh, my God. We sat down and there was blood everywhere. The blood kid and caught me. I'd like, like, Cersei Ronan and her should sit down and they I'd love should, to hear that discussion. They should. That was quite nice, but let's move on. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I also sat down with her co-stars, uh, Catherine Newton. Yes, we know her from Bad Teacher, which she was incredible right? in, and also Blockers. She's a comedic genius, and she brings the comedy into this horror movie, which makes up perfect combination horror comedy i'm sold i forgot she was in bad teacher i mean she was the size of abigail when she was in bad teacher <laughs> yeah. uh and also dan stevens dan stevens more recently probably one of his bigger roles he was the beast in beauty and the beast much more beastly in this he's no. quite the jerk in this take a look 
I, you know, I think the trailer gives it away. You're not a very nice guy. No. Yeah. Thanks. Was awesome. this fun? It was great fun. Uh, it's such a fun gang. Matt and Tyler, the Radio Silence boys, the directors are so fun. They run a really, really fun, funny, playful set. Right. And we had a good time. <laughs> we did have a good time. Was it creepy though? Be you know, it's shot practically in this creepy house. I hear nothing good about this house except it worked. It worked really well. It was two houses. It's like this giant house cr connected by a tunnel or bridge. Mm. Felt like a tunnel. It all felt very underground, you know, right. like spooky. But it was a character in itself. I think it adds a lot to the film. And the best part is that we got to shoot in in order because it's just one location. Right. So as a cast, as we got to know each other, our characters got to know each other, and I think it makes a much easier like through line for me like I know where my character is at all times um it's really cool very cool indeed something else we haven't even touched on the character that we haven't talked about in this movie the missing cast member the house it is amazing they oh shot the entire God. thing practically in one house can you li I want to live there I mean maybe without Abigail mm -hmm. Uh, maybe I'd still live there actually that's a pr that house in and of itself you're right is a character the fact that you said you would live there says so much about you. Not me, neither would these guys. Take a look. Let's just say there's some moments in this movie the two of you have despair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, good yeah. to see you out of yeah, despair. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Uh, for you, I just recently found out that this was shot entirely in a creepy house, yes. practically. Mm -hmm. What's the best thing about that location? Nothing's the best thing about the location. <laughs> uh, I remember walking into the house and you just feel this coldness, but it's not cold. And then you're like, okay, we have a movie because I'm actually really feeling it. And I'm looking at everybody else and they're feeling the same thing. But, um, oh, oh, tell them the story about the, the background on the mansion. Oh, it, this was a, a mansion that was owned by the Guinness family. And uh, there's a secret hallway that leads to another mansion. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, apparently he kept his mistress. And that other mansion for years was a functioning orphanage. Um, uh, th 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 there are so many stories and secrets being whispered at you as you walk through this house. That, uh, it's not hard to feel um, <laughs> feel scared. Uh, you know, if you're walking by yourself down a hallway, you're like, okay. you know, it was very easy to scare people. I, I love scaring the crap out of people. So, um, you know, I hid behind this taxidermy bear <laughs> and we I had this that. AD, <laughs> Alex, who was terrified of everything. And yeah. I just kind of, <laughs> and it was phenomenal. And he's already like 18 feet tall. Can you I imagine him standing lurking in the shadows? No, I think he'd be more scary more scary. Yeah. He'd be scarier than Abigail. Just talking about it gives me the creeps. And no offense to Kevin Durant, his character and the actor, they don't seem a far cry apart. <laughs> no. See the movie. It's not offensive. No, you'll no, see. You'll no. see. And like I said, best combination, horror, comedy, go see it. On the big screen, Abigail is awesome. All right, also coming up next, awesome for more reasons than I can even begin to tell you here. A game-changing movie, making the world a better place, The Long Game. We'll talk with Dennis Quaid, its stars, and go behind the scenes with our friend Daniela. Next. Hey, welcome back. This is Take a Look. My name is Marcus Allen. This is Kelly Savannah Deaton, influencer, travel blogger, lots of other stuff. Google her, kids. All right, this is Take a Look. It's where we take a look at streaming series, movies, and right now I want to talk about a movie that makes the world a better place. Yes. I love The Long Game. So good. It's based so on good. a true story. Let's dive into it with our friend who went deep behind the scenes with yes. the cast and crew of The Long Game. Her name is Daniela Gonzosa. Daniela Gonzosa, Premier Impacto. Hi. Going on 30 years. How are you? Wow. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Mark. Primer Impacto. Yes, going on 30 years at uh, Univision at 5 p.m. every day. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. Uh, we started, I mean, the, the show started 30 years ago. Uh -huh. um, and uh, you can watch it every day at 5 p.m. Uh, in, you know, along the, uh, the United States and also in Latin America. We will check our local listings for you. Uh, coming up right now, we want to talk about The Long Game. You went behind the scenes with Dennis Quaid. First of all, tell everybody this is based on a true story. Sum up that true story. Yes, this is the story about five Mexican-American kids uh, in high school. Um, that worked as caddies in a local country club in, in the south of Texas. But of course, they were not let um, 
they, they were caddies. They, they couldn't play right. in the golf club mm-hmm. because they were Mexican-American. And so they basically built uh, their golf course in a mountain, uh, you know, a very, um, uh, I don't know, a very precarious uh, version of a golf course. But they built a little golf course in which they started to play and to practice. Enter uh, the uh, super, superintendent of uh, the high school, played by Jay Hernandez, who saw the potential in the kids and started to train them along with um, the, another coach, played by Dennis Quaid, which actually is a producer as well of the film. And uh, they actually got to win a big competition and got to not only to play, but to win the competition in the golf course in which they were never allowed to play. It is an amazing true story. I love your chat with Dennis Quaid. In fact, let's take a look. This is a very inspirational story. But why were you interested in, in this uh, small independent film? We want to do stories that are, are uplifting, that are you know, underdog stories, American stories. Yeah, it reminds us of where we were and how far we've come, maybe where we need, still need to go. What was your reaction were you, when you first learned about this story? It was, as you said, you know, nobody would have uh, written something like this. Uh, well, I couldn't believe that nobody that I hadn't heard it before because I grew up in Texas, for one thing. You know, sports movies are can be successful, but they can't just be about the sport. They have to be about something uh, that's universal to people. Like the rookie was about second chances in life, and I, and it, that's I think. People can, everybody can relate to. Where do you want to go after this? More stories like this, you said? Yeah, I think so. It's, you know, this really kind of what I consider my brand, you know. Mm. It's, uh, I, we have a, a story I want to tell, the Charlie Pride story. I um, got the rights to his story uh, a couple of years before he passed. He passed during COVID. He was the, he was the first, really the first, uh, black uh, country western artist during the 60s. He was kind of a person that, you know, didn't fit in, uh, you know, to either culture in a way, but just, he, but he, he transcended all that. I think that those messages are very needed, very much needed right now, a message of union. I, I totally agree with you. And uh, I think we ought to celebrate that. There's a lot of stories out there like that. So... We hear a lot of bad ones, you know. It's it's great to to hear positive stories because they tell us how far we've come. You know, that's just life. Sometimes you land on the green, sometimes you're in the bunker, but you always play it as it lies. Stories of inclusion and access, very important. The long game does it very, very well. That was an awesome it chat. Does. What a positive story. And Daniela, we have to wrap it up, but can you please talk to us about Curly and Proud? <laughs> Yes, uh, a brand that I created because I was told for many years um, by executives on TV but that my hair um, wasn't actually the hair that should be on TV, that I had to straighten it <laughs> because, it, you know, focus groups said that it looked unprofessional. How dare they? Uh, and I created How dare they? <laughs> it happened. It happened during a lot of years that now the Gen Z are like coming back to the curls and, you know, being very positive and proud about them. But uh, there were a lot of years, Kelly, in which I, you know, I had to fight with them because they didn't wow. like my hair. So I created Curly and Proud because of that. Go check it out. Curly and Proud. And uh, oh, no. there's a lot of cute merchandise for um, girls that are curly and proud. <laughs> Awesome. awesome. You rock it. Thank, thank you so much you. for hanging out. Thanks for bringing us the long game. Daniela thank Ganoza, you. thank you so thank much. You. Talk to you soon. Bye. The pride Bye. of Peru. All right, coming up next, let's keep this party going. Uh, as I say party, we actually shift to something serious. I know. The scoop behind a very serious story. The scoop going to the BBC when we come back. Hey, welcome back. This is Take a Look, where we talk about all things on all screens, whether they are big or small, whether they are sports, whether they're streaming series, cooking, or movies. Uh, right now, a movie to see streaming. Yes.
Oh, I, man. Right. I noticed how, like, man. everybody I talk to about this, they kind of tense up. Oh, we're going to talk about that we're now. We're going to talk about that scoop. The Epstein scandal, a layer of that, of course, was Prince Andrew. This goes behind the scenes specifically of the journalists who are uncovering that and how brave, in fact, they were in the face of that. Indeed, because a lot of people were clamoring to figure out this relationship between Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein and what that entails. And guess what? The journalists got what they wanted, and there's that infamous photo, and so this movie tells that story. Exactly. Jillian Anderson, of course, you know her from the X-Files star-studded cast, along with her Billy, who you know from Doctor Who and lots mm -hmm. of other stuff. We talked about uh, yeah, how important this was. Take a look. He is sort of has this restless pursuit to get this job done, and, and she's brilliant at it, and people need to know about her, really, and that type, that style and level of journalism, how crucial it is. I mean, it will give people an appreciation for uh, how difficult this task is and what people go through and what they put on the line in order to get these stories. Uh, both of you, remarkable job. I can't wait for people to see Scoop. Help me finish this sentence. See Scoop because... <sighs> It's good. Ooh, it's good. It's good. It's a thriller. It and, but, also, but, but also, at the end of the day, you know, it's an important story. It's important to platform um, uh, the need uh, for consistent, independent journalism and for journalists to have an opportunity to hold power to account. And um, I think this film not only does that, but it highlights the women who were courageous enough to come forward and uh, address the main issue at hand, which is uh, Epstein and. Uh, sex trafficking. Courageous is an understatement. So grateful that movies like this are getting made, not only to shine light on the original cause that we need to stop sex trafficking, exactly. the matter at hand, but then also to celebrate the people that are brave enough to stand up against it. Exactly. Uh, American journalism, there's one thing to be said, but to be a, a UK journalist going slightly against the royals, bravery is an understatement. That's what you call behind enemy lines. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, check it out. It is Scoop. It is on Netflix as we speak. All right, let's shake that off a little bit. Coming up next, let's get creeped out in a fictional way. America's favorite doll that is also a serial killer. You know him, Chucky, next. Hey, welcome back. It is Take a Look, where we take a look at all things streaming and all things on big screens and small screens. Kelly Savannah Deaton, I'm Mark S. Allen, and you are? Oh, that's my favorite name. Thanks nice for joining us. All right. Season three, Chucky. I'm so geeked out about this. <sighs> I love that we book into the show, starting with Abigail, which has like 30,000 gallons of blood. It's got to be competed with, uh, competing, that is, with Chucky, because Chucky... A lot of blood in this season three. Always blood, always blood. And who knew such a doll would just elicit such fear. Just hearing the word Chucky yeah. makes you want to crawl under the covers. All honestly. right, coming back for season three, who's played multiple characters in this series, mm -hmm. Devon Sawyer. You know him? Yes. How so? Uh, Devin Siwa. Yeah. Yes, he plays the president. Hold on. Is it Siwa or Sawyer? Anybody? I know. Anyway, we keep having as this we debate. were. As He's from Idle Hands. He's from a plethora of things. Yeah, he was the original Casper. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, Mark. You just release a love of mine. I forgot. I was obsessed with him as Casper. Oh, and he was only in that for like five seconds. Uh, All right. Uh, I, I sat I down with him, him to talk about his first big feature, <laughs> Idle Hands. Look at this kid. Take a look. Idle Hands. The touching story of a boy and his hand. I don't want to give much away, but uh, you are in some ways open to do a sequel. Would you do it? Mm, I don't, depending on, uh, I mean, it's really hard to do a sequel for this movie because I've lost my hand. Uh -huh. uh, it could be a foot. It could be idle feet, right. It could be uh, it could be idle any part of my body. <laughs> Hell, we could make a porno. Uh, whoa. 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 Sit whoa. down now. Damn I think on. he saw your frosted tips and his tips and said, hey, let's make a porno. What was that? I was, where were my friends? Why did they pull me aside and go, dude, your hair looks like Top Ramen? Back, you know why? Because <laughs> they were singing the Backstreet Boys. All right, settle down. <laughs> Producers will tell me we got to wrap it up and move on. I sat down with Jennifer and Devin to talk about this. Look.
Don loved him so much. He brought him back the second season, the third season. I think now the whole uh, Chucky fandom loves to see how Devin is going to die. And Don loves killing Devin. Like last season, he was a priest and his head just exploded right off of his body in, during an exorcism, as that as they do. He you know? sent me, because because uh. they shot that with a with a dummy and they exploded it and, and I had gone yeah. home already. And he sent me the video for that at three in the morning and it's like, he, I, I got a ting on my phone. It's like, we're, we just killed you. And there's the video of me exploding. And all you hear is the crew in the background applauding and cheering. And like, <laughs> I was like, ah. Uh, Did he keep the head? <laughs> no, Don kept the head. Yes. He's, uh, got, he's got like a collection of heads from all, heads. <laughs> from all people he's killed. All right, guys, bring it home. Chucky, season three, sci-fi. You got to take a look because. It's a blast. It's it's one of these grab a bucket of popcorn, sit down and and have a really good time and get some scares and some laughs and 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 see some good story and it's a it's a wonderfully written, beautifully shot, well wonderfully acted. acted television series. It's super funny and uh, we're a hundred percent on the tomato meter, which is very very rare. There's usually one critic that wants to spoil the party. Everyone loves us. Easily top ten TV right now. Easily yeah. top ten. I agree. <laughs> Thanks. Bye guys. Nice talking to you. It is on sci-fi. It is easily top 10 and well-deserved yeah. that 100%. I have many it people is. that debate me and I go, seriously, you're going to debate me on Chucky? Look, just yeah. leave Chucky behind if you're not into it. But give it a give it a try. I mean, it has blood, gore, entertaining. It's entertaining. It's funny. I mean, I think it has something for everyone. Absolutely. Chucky. Ask for it by name. His <laughs> name. All right, coming up next week, Zendaya. Man, Zendaya, what can I say? She's getting her groove on in a multitude of ways. In three ways. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that a sports reference I'm not getting? Anyway, we'll talk challengers and tennis and Zendaya next week. Thanks for hanging out. I'll take a look. All right. Yeah. Oh, try what? that again. Yeah. Oh, try it again.